Hello everyone, Darren here from Leader, and today we're doing a product overview of Unify Protect, as well as we're going to cover off um, how to get started with Unify Protect mainly, and then also how to adopt a camera using Unify Protect the web application, which is found at unify.ui.com using your UI account or Ubiquity account. We're going to go through a adoption of the G4 Dome that we did an unboxing for a couple of weeks ago. And we're also going to set that camera up and show you how to configure it. So let's get started. I just wanted to let everybody know that the portal itself, the Unify Protect, has actually been updated. So if I go into my Unify Dream Machine, I can actually go down into Settings. And then in Settings, I can find Updates. And you'll see that my Unify Protect environment is up to date at version 1.19. Now, Ubiquity have actually done a bit of an update on this particular one. There's a few bug fixes and there's a bunch of new features. So definitely do your research on see what's new. If you um, are wondering whether to update or not, I can always recommend to, um, mainly because there's a, a bunch of new features that have become available for it and it does smooth a whole lot of bug fixes out, typical updates do. Uh, so that's fantastic to see. So to understand what the Unify Protect is, uh, Unify Protect is Ubiquity's surveillance camera and video management system for the Unify range of cameras and security products. So if we go back into the portal here, we're going to go to my, my Unify Dream Machine. Um, and let's have a bit of a chat about what we need to do to get started with Unify Protect. You firstly need a Unify OS console, and this manages your cameras and stores all the footage. Um, you might also need a, if you've got maybe a Unify Cloud Key, if you've got a Gen 1, uh, then you need, would always recommend to go the Gen 2. There's also the Gen 2 Plus, which the Plus itself does house a 2.5 inch hard disk drive. Uh, but the Unify Dream Machine Pro that we're using here, it stores a 3.5 inch hard disk drive, which uh, saves all the recordings that you can look at in real time or download later at the end of the day. Now, the reason why we've gone for the Unified Dream Machine Pro, mainly is because it's an all-in-one solution. It integrates all the Unify applications, as you can see here, Network, Protect, Access, and Talk. Um, it also has room for a 3.5-inch hard disk drives for all the recordings. I think I've got a terabyte in mine at the moment, but it goes up to maybe 8 terabytes and I know leader themselves have a bundle option if you're looking at the unified dream machine pro that you can actually get the bundled with a eight terabyte surveillance disk drive which is fantastic but if you do have a bigger environment and you're wanting a little bit more storage or multiple bay storage base then ubiquity do have a solution for you there and the good thing about those particular ones that have either four or seven bays those ones can uh, are raid configurable for any backup purposes as well and also to get started, you also need one or more Protect cameras uh, or other security products. So in this case, we have two. I've already got one installed, which is the G3 Flex, and I'm going to adopt a G4 Dome camera today as well. So let's do that. All right, so we're going to adopt the G4 Dome camera in Unify Protect. So I'm just going to click on Unify Protect. You can see my environment here. Now, as I said before, this may look a little bit different to yours uh, because I'm running the latest version of Unify Protect at 1.19. Now, what I've done in, in the back of my, on the front of my switch, I've got a PoE enabled Unify Switch 48 port pro, uh, which does PoE. So I've just plugged a long ethernet cable into that one, that port, and then plugged into the back of the G4 dome to get this one adopted. As you can see here, I've got my, my Dream Machine and then I've got my G3 Flex. If I'm just gonna click on Add Device on the top here because I have plugged it in and it is ready to go. So we'll see the G4 Dome here. Now here I can name it if I want to, but I'm just gonna use it as G4 Dome. And all I need to do is click on Add Devices and that's going to start the provisioning and you'll hear a nice ding, uh, meaning that that is ready to go uh, and started the whole process. As I did mention, I'm doing this all through the unify.ui.com portal, but uh, as you may be aware, the Unify system does have their own suite of mobile applications, which can do all the same configuration setups, um, mostly through this, mostly everything through the mobile application, uh, but the web application does have a couple of extra features as well. 
Alrighty, now that the camera has been fully adopted and we can tell this by the solid green light in the new version of the Unify portal, I'm just going to click on the G4 dome here. And here we've got a bit of an overview. So it's all the really the information you see uh, that you need. As you can see, it's got a live uh, picture of myself. We've got how long the camera has been up for, that it's connected, the MAC address and all the above from here. So that's pretty much a, a nice little overview of what we need. If we click on recording, now this is where really you'll spend a lot of time on the camera itself. Um, and these are all the settings that we're going to go through in a moment. So under recording options, we've got recording mode, you can have it to always, never, or just for motion events, which you can actually configure after the fact. Uh, I'm just going to leave this one as always for now. You can check out the different recording quality. Now, every camera is going to be different. At this stage, as I said before, we are using a G4 Dome. If you're using like a G4 Pro, then they support up to 4K uh, image quality, whereas this particular one is only 720 or 4 uh, megapixels. So we can, through here, you can change the frame rate uh, and the image quality as well. As it says, the faster the frame rate, the more smooth video playback, as well as for image quality, you want the best image quality as well. Obviously, it depends on where this particular one is mounted. And um, this will actually affect how much how much storage it does use. Um, so I do recommend have a bit of a play around with those ones from here. Now, the cool part about the Unified Protect stuff is that you can do motion detection, motion zones, and privacy zones. So if we go into here, with the dis detection settings, uh, you've got the different so seconds of motion needed to trigger detection. Now, it could be really small or it could be quite a while, depending if you know, someone's walking through, someone's walking past, those sort of things. So typically, so best practice we do is about one second, uh, but you can go all go as granular as 2 to 2.5 all the way up to 5 seconds so that's quite a long time I would say for someone who's moving past the camera so I think we keep it at here about one second and then from seconds of recording before and after the detection I would probably recommend to keep that about the five second mark there that just gives it plenty of time before and after the event so it's always best practice to have more video footage than not enough video footage from here, we can check out the motion zone. So depending on where this is located, if it's at the front of a business or a front of a house, uh, you can actually change the zones itself. So I'm just going to drop this down. I'm going to add a motion zone. You can actually have more multiple zones uh, to what it would be, um, depending on where it is. You can have one here, one there. So we've got the default zone. We can actually name this one to, um, let's just look at, say, driveway as an example. And then I can have the sensitivity. So we're going to have 100% or 50% or all the way down to 0%. Obviously, it depends on how much sensitivity you want. Standard's about 50%, so that's fine. Uh, we can actually grab these little corners here. So if you've got a, if you've got it, say, you've got your driveway here, but you've got your, um, your neighbor's fence line or business's fence line that you, you know, you don't really want to uh, keep all footage of depends on what it is uh, you can actually grab these corners here and you can configure it however it was but the fun thing about this one is that if you bring it into here you'll see that it actually adds another little movement point through here and then it adds another one in particular here so you can actually really customize it depending on the path or whatsoever that you need to uh, configure it through so you can really get as really follow that path um, quite well. You can actually add uh, additional zones from here and highlight motion zones as well. So I'm just going to click on save for this particular one and then all I need to do is click on the X and that'll close that particular player and as I said you can add multiple motion zones if you need to. Now we have smart detections as well. So smart detections is using the AI integrated in the Unify Protect portal uh, and what this does is you can actually pick up people or person as well as vehicles now vehicles is still in beta so if you don't see that on your um, your cameras then definitely recommend to update your environment as well as to um, maybe it could be the camera itself so would recommend having a look into that so i'm going to put in a pathway here as the name and I want to detect both of these ones, so vehicle and people, uh, you can actually just select one or the other, and it will 
work out those for us. Click on save, and then I can once again just pick out these zones here. So maybe if I jump on the other side, bring this down, this one back up, um, and really manipulate this zone to however I need it to be. So then my zone is as perfect as possible, I guess, uh, to make sure that it uh, is capturing where particular people would be walking through. So maybe they're going past your your driveway, whether they're going past your business's entrance, you just want to make sure that you can capture as much information from there as well. As I said before, uh, we can add additional zones from here. And then once you're happy with everything, you can just click on save and then close the player. And then we've also got privacy zones. Now, privacy zones allows you to define specific areas that will not be recorded. Now, that's really important. So if, you know, as I said before, it is if it's your neighbor's fence that you don't want to record or anything like that, or if it's um, your next door neighbor's business or something like that, we can add a new zone here. And then as you can see, it is blue. So this is where the privacy section goes. So if I want to, um, once again, just bring, manipulate the corners all the way to the edges. Wait for that to load. And maybe that is the, the zone itself. I can also name the zone and I can say, um, Neighbors yard, as an example, and click on save American uh, wording. Save that there, perfect. And as you can see here, it's got the black zone just there. So any recording that was that that uh, that area that you've defined, it'll actually block it out. So it'll record everything around it except for the private zone. Once you're happy with everything and you got that set up, then you can click on apply changes and that's gonna configure everything that we've just done there. And the last thing that I want to go through is underneath the settings tab. So once again, this is where we can actually name the camera. So usually best practice is where we can, you, you would name it where it'd be located. So this is actually at my desk as you probably have gathered from the image footage that you would have seen. So I can just be like Darren's desk. And then we can check out the microphone sensitivity here as well, or permanently disable it, depending on whether you want to record the sound or not. Depends on where it's located. Maybe it's a good best practice to keep it on, but then if it's in a, maybe it's really close to an entranceway, then you can reduce the sensitivity uh, maybe to 52%. And, um, and then it's not people, it's just normal stuff, but whether it's maybe it's one camera um, covering a whole, maybe a, um, a car park and you want to have the sensitivity high, maybe people are talking in the distance, uh, then it will pick that sort of stuff up a bit better. As I mentioned before on the unboxing, the G4 Dome camera has actually got three microphones on that one. So it has uh, different angles that it can pick it up from where people are talking. Now, as you heard that um, status uh, when we turned the G4 dome camera on, it was adopting. It had a really nice, really loud noise. Obviously, that's to help you pinpoint where it is, but it's also to as a nice little acknowledgement where that, that is turned on and ready to go. Underneath here, we've got the adjust camera picture. But as you can see, it's actually got my private zone. So... I'm just going to quickly uh, turn the private zone off, save changes, go back to private zones, add privacy zone, and I can just click on delete this particular one here, just for these purposes. And that'll open that back up. Go back into settings, and then in adjust picture quality, here is where we can actually turn your microphone on or off, and then we can change the brightness levels as well, so we can have it really bright or you know dull the brightness out depending on where the camera is located as I said just making sure that it is set up perfectly your contrast as well so if it's in a you know it's got some really nice bright lights uh, from the morning maybe from a from the sun or maybe in the evening that is very close to a, uh, a street lamp something like that 
you can change all the saturation, the sharpness, uh, and then also you can turn on HDR, which is quite nice. That's typically enabled by default. Uh, and also the orientation. You can have it to auto-rotate. So mine's actually, in some cases, the G4 Dome's really good for uh, roof mounting, and it will auto-rotate for you. So it's got the, the geosensors in there as well. And that's really about it. So once you've happy and had a bit of a play with that particular one there, click on Done. And the last thing I want to show you is the overlay information. So if you want to maybe put a timestamp on it, the camera name, and a, the Unify logo just there, and then also the bitrate if you wanted to, just to see how everything's chugging along. So once you click on Apply Changes, you'll see that coming up in the top left-hand corner of there. As you see that, there you go. Today's date, time, and where it's located at my desk. Other than that, underneath here, you've got the reboot options, and then you can also unmanage the camera. Uh, reboot, obviously, if you needed or wanted to, and then uh, if you need to unmanage the camera, maybe if you're redeploying the camera to another location or to a new site. So there you have it. Today we've gone through what you need to do to get started with Unify Protect and how to adopt a new camera like the G4 Dome through the web application specifically. And also how what you can do to set it up and configure the camera for best operation. Um, so I hope you have enjoyed the video and I hope it's helped you for getting started or if you wanted to just have a bit more of a better look about how the Unify Protect camera works. Once again, my name's Darren and I'd like to thank you very much for watching.